بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان سايت اوديو الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد ان this brief sitting we're in to the use of the microphone and the effect of us being in one room and our sisters being in another hoping that the people uh, that the children are silent because that's often the complaint of the sisters when lectures are given that the children are making noise or other sisters who don't yet know the importance of knowledge are uh, making noise we will inshallah ta'ala uh, try to remember Allah subhanahu ta'ala and Uh, some of the words of Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah regarding the servant of Allah ta'ala and his monumental work called Ruwab al-Sayyid before that we were talking about Bashara since we've been ordered Bashiru wa la tanafiru give glad tidings and don't run people away glad tidings to yourself and glad tidings to others so that you can insha'Allah ta'ala into surur any farh uh, pleasure and happiness into the heart of another believer and this is a very important matter that we have been lacking trying to enter that which uh, is of a uh, form of pleasure or happiness within the hearts of our brothers some of us don't care at all and in others uh, that don't have the presence of mind to do it often enough The Bashara that I was speaking about though, glad tidings, was for that sister, Al-Mu'mina, the believing woman, Al-Muslima, Min Al-Salafiyyat, and he trying to be upon the way to Salaf, uh, who, and he finds herself in a circumstance of ghurba, strangeness. Strangeness because of her sticking to the deen of Allah Taala. Strange because she's sticking to what Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated and ordered strange because she implements that which the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was implementing strange because in a time where the vast majority of women even amongst the Muslimat, the Muslim women have begun to un- begun or have completely uncovered and she is from top to bottom in black or in Uh, in some form of cloth the bashara to be given to such a sister is that bi'idhni allahi ta'ala mu'aida kunna al-janna our final destination bi'idhni allahi ta'ala is the jannah the paradise uh, by the fact that you are sticking to the book of Allah ta'ala and sticking to the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and holding on to those principles which you have gotten from the Sahabiyat and righteous women throughout the centuries and that there's no flinching in this matter and no uh, cowing down and no compromising on these issues but you have decided that this is the life that you're going to live and this is the manner in which you're going to direct, direct, your, direct your life so this is a great Bashara glad tidings for that type of sister who is doing all of this بإذن الله تعالى I'm not saying to the level of perfection for everybody to make mistakes and there's always deficiencies but trying her utmost to please Allah تبارك وتعالى and to do the actions or carry out the actions of ibadat, the worship and the like purely for the pleasure of Allah مخلصاً له دين making her religion sincere for Allah تبارك وتعالى this is something truly amazing something astonishing and something that carries with it a great great reward a great reward so having that's the Bashara of Ibn Allah Ta'ala and he, we read some of the words of Ibn Qayyim Rahimullah in his monumental work one day I, either I hope that all of us will be reading in Arabic or that it will be a decent translation of it his book is a Wabil Sayyid ورافع قلم الطيب هو اساسا بن كار قلم الطيب وعمل الصالح the very very 
beautiful book. And in reading it, I found many benefits throughout the years. Shukran. He says, "La hala la quwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim." Allah Taala is the one to be asked, and the one who we hope that will accept or answer our uh, du'a, and that He will be our guardian this world and hereafter. And then we ask him to place up on his his ni'mah, his blessings, ذاحراً وباكراً outwardly and inwardly. And make us of those, and on this phrase that you hear now, is going to be the phrase that you, you've you heard in Qawa'ad Arba, from Muhammad Rahimullah, and many other great books, that make us of those, that if we are blessed, we what? Shaka, we are thankful. And if we are tested, sabara, we are patient. And if we, or when we commit sins, we seek the forgiveness of Allah. These three matters, and this is, uh, Muhammad Wahab got these words exactly from Ibn Qayyim, it seems. These three matters are the unwan sa'adat al-abd, are the title of, or indication of the fortunate Fortune of the servant being fortunate, and alamat of falahu, and sign of him, him or her being successful, fit dunya wal akhirah in this life and after. These three matters never go away from a servant. For in the abd, the servant is always going through these circumstances, these three matters. Either they are being blessed, so they must be thankful, or they are being tested, so they must be patient. Or they commit a sin, excuse me, so they must seek forgiveness. These three levels, the first is the blessing of Allah Ta'ala. Ni'mah of Allah Ta'ala. How do you keep a blessing that Allah Ta'ala has given you? فَقَيَّدَحَا A shukr. You, you, you keep it by being grateful to Allah. This gratefulness is based upon three matters. Inwardly, you yourself realize it's a blessing. That upon your tongue, you talk about it openly. Like in the ayah, and regarding the blessing of your Lord, relate to others. Thirdly, that you carry that uh, or that which you have been blessed with, that you use it in a manner which is pleasing to Allah Taala, the one who gave it to you, the one who granted it to you. If the person does this, then they have truly been grateful, even though, let it be known, that they are short in their gratefulness. Their gratefulness is not at the level that it should be. But, if they do that, Recognize the greatness or the blessing within themselves. Talk about it upon their tongues and carry out that blessing or spend that blessing or use that blessing for the pleasure of Allah. Then they have been grateful with some shortness in that. With some deficiency in that. Second matter is al-mahn. The trials and tribulations and difficulties that Allah took to test us with. The obligation here is a sabr. Patience. And sabr is what? Habsul nafs. Yeah, and he's stopping and keeping the, the self from a tasakhut bil maqdur. From being displeased with that which was decreed. Being displeased with that which was decreed. Wahab lisan, stopping and imprisoning the tongue, if you will, from a shakwa, from complaining about the decree. Or complaining about that trial, that particular trial or tribulation that has come one's way. وحبس الجوارح Preventing the limbs from falling into sins. Like latum hitting oneself, shakal thiyab, you know, tearing one clothing. Usually when people hear 
sad news, this is what they do. They pull their hair, they beat their cheeks, they, they tear their clothing, and he, and he pull their hair, and like this. All of this is the absence of sabr. The opposite of sabr. Sabr is not to do any of that. To stop yourself from doing any of that. Control yourself. For me, that is sabr. I need the level of patience. It's upon these three principles that we have just mentioned. The three things that must be avoided. Complaining about the, uh, the, the decree or having, you know, stopping oneself from uh, having problems with decree or disliking the decree. Uh, stopping one's tongue from complaining about it and the like. And stopping one's limbs from doing that which is in disobedience to Allah. فَإِذَا كَامَ بِهِ الْعَبْدِ If the servant establishes this, كَمَا يَنْبَغِي As he should or as he befits him, then his test will be turned into a blessing. And that which is displeasing will become that which is mahboob and pleasing. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, listen sisters to this point. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not test us to destroy us. But He tests us to examine our, our patience and our ubudiyah, our worship of Him. For our ubudiyah, our worship of Allah ta'ala is all times and all circumstances. For the servant has certain worships he must do fi darra in the difficult times. Just as a servant has worship he should do fi sara in the easy times. And the servants have worship that he should do in matters that's displeasing to him. Huh? Just like the servant has worships as he does and he loves them. The majority of the, the creatures, he said, do that worship that they are pleased with. He said, but the real matter is doing that point, points of ibadat to worship in matters when one is displeased. maratib al ibad. The servants are on different levels in this regard. And according to this level they are regarding the worship of Allah Taala in all times, this is how they their levels are with Allah. This is how their levels are with Allah. Then he gives example. For wudu bil ma'al barid, making wudu with cold water, to shiddat al har ubudiyah. When it's extremely hot outside, this is a worship. And having relations with one wife, one, one's wife is also a worship. And spending up on your family is also a worship. Also, making wudu with cold water when it's cold outside is a worship. And leaving sins when everything inside of you desires it. Because you fear Allah Ta'ala, not because you fear the people, is also a worship. And spending the time of difficulty is a worship. Well, I can farq adheem, the Sheikh says. What a great difference between the two types of worships. What a great difference between the two types of worship. فَمَنْ كَانَ عَبْدًا لِلَّهِ فِي حَالَتَيْنِ the one who is a servant to Allah in both situations, the good times and the bad times, the easy times and the difficult times, the bitter times and the sweet times, قَائِمْ بِحَقِّهِ فِي الْمَقْرُوبِ مَحْبُوبِ Establishing the rights of Allah when is that which is as pleasing to one or that which is beloved to one. فَذَاكَ لَذِي تَنَّاوَلَهُ قَوْلُهُ This is the one that will achieve what Allah said in His statement. أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ عَبْدِهِ أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ عَبْدِهِ is, is not Allah sufficient for His servants? Is not Allah sufficient for His servant? So to Zuma verse 25. وَفِي كِرَاءَةِ الْأُخْرَى إِبَادَهُ His servants. وَهُمَ السِّوَاءَ فَالْكِثَايَ Total sufficiency. Total help. Total support 
from Allah Ta'ala a tamma, complete, is with ubudiya tamma, complete servitude. And it's deficient when servitude and worship is deficient. From Allah khayran, so he who finds good, let him praise Allah. And let him who finds other than Allah blame no one but himself. Wahalai, these servants, these servants who worship Allah in the good times and in the bad times and in the bitter times and in the sweet times, they are the ones that Allah spoke about that shaitan doesn't have any authority over them. Allah Ta'ala, Allah the Exalted says, Verily, my ibadi, my, my ibadi, my servants, Laysa alayhi sultan. You don't have any authority over them. Hazr, verse 22. And when, a, when the enemy of Allah Iblis understood that Allah Ta'ala was protecting his servants and would not give his servants to him and that he would not give him authority over them, he said, by your idzah, your honor, or power, I will misguide all of them except, of course, Ibad, the servants who are mukhlisin, sincere. And Allah says, Iblis has uh, fulfilled his uh, matter or pledge, saying that, I mean, to the degree that he has followed by such a vast majority of people, except the believers. And he had no authority over them, huh? no authority over them, Except that Allah says He wanted to know those who believe in the hereafter from those who were in a state of shak, who were in a state of dark uh, doubt. That's source of Sabah, verse 21. So Allah didn't give Shaitan authority over his righteous believing servants. They are under the protection of Allah, they are under the guardianship of Allah. They are under his protecting cloth. And if an enemy such as shaitan pulls them every so often, this is like every so often the thief gets something from a man who's unaware. For هَذَا لَا min. This is something that must happen. Because the servant will be tested, will be, will ghafla, be neglectful. And the servant will be tested with shahwa, with desire, and the servant will be tested with ghadab, with anger. And these are the three doors that shaitan enters upon the servant. From neglect, the door, to, door of neglect, the door of desire, and the door of anger. And as much as a servant tries to stop himself or prevent that from happening, he will be neglectful sometime. He will be negligent and unaware sometime. And much as he tries to prevent this, he will have some desire sometime. And much as he tries to prevent that, he will have some anger sometime. وَقَدْ كَانَ Adam أَبُوا Bashar, Adam the father of all mankind, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مِنْ أَحْلَمَ الْخَلْقِ Adam was forbearing, the most forbearing of the creatures. And he had the best aqlan, the best intelligence, the best mind. وَأَثْبَتُهُمْ He was the most firm. But with all of that, Shaytan kept, the enemy of Allah kept coming at him, kept coming after him, and to add, kept coming after him until Adam fell into what he fell in. So, what about someone who doesn't have any forbearance? And one whose intelligence, compared to, comparing it to the intelligence of his father Adam, is like, uh, and as he says, a needle or a, a drop of water from the ocean. But shaitan doesn't come at a servant and gets to him except every so often when the servant is negligent and he makes him fall into sins or, or pushes him to fall into sin, inspires him to fall into sin. Why alone? And he thinks that this servant won't turn to Allah Azzawajal after that. I got him in the sin. He's not going to uh, repent. He's not going to go back to Allah. This is how he thinks. 
He says, he believes, Shaitan believes that whatever he has made him fall into, or whatever he has made her fall into from sins, is that which would destroy that servant and prevent that servant from ever regaining any type of ground. But then Ibn, Ibn Qayyim says something very important. He says, وَلَكِنْ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى But the bounty of Allah, the exalted, وَرَحْمَةِ in his, in his mercy, and His forgiveness, مِنْ وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ كُلَّهِ is behind all of that. So if Allah Ta'ala wants from a servant good, فَتَلَهُ أَقْوَابَ التَّوْبَةِ He opens for that servant the door to repentance. وَالْنَدَمْ Neglect. وَالْإِنْكِسَارِ That he breaks himself down. وَالْذِيلْ Humility. وَالْإِبْتِقَارِ That he feels an impoverished Poor before Allah Taala, seeking the help of Allah, and truthfully reconnecting himself with Allah, and constantly asking Allah, making du'a to Allah, and seeking nearness to Allah by doing what he can of hasanat or what she can of hasanat, good deeds. Ma rahmati, which will make these matters all that has been mentioned. From the door of Tawbah being open, from Nadam, regret, from Kisar breaking himself down, humiliation before Allah, understanding he's impoverished and poor and poorness in his essence in need of Allah, well it's the added to be seeking the help of Allah and truthfully returning to Allah and constantly calling upon Allah and supplicating Allah and doing as much as he or she can of hasanat, good deeds. So much so that these hasanat make that particular sin that shaitan made the end of fall into, made a means of mercy. Sabab rahmatillah made a means of the mercy of Allah. And to the shaitan, the enemy of Allah would say, Woe to me, would that I had just left him alone and had not bothered him and, and, uh, and inspired him and whispered to him to fall into that sin. وَهَذَا مَا نَقَوْلُ بَعْدَ السَّلَفِ This is the meaning of some of the salaf. That an abd, a servant, the a'mal al-dham, could commit a sin. يَدْخَلْ بِهِ جَنَّةً And through that sin he enters the paradise. وَيَعْمَلْ حَسَنَا He could do a good deed. يَدْخَلْ بِهَا النَّارِ And enter the hellfire. قَالُوا كَيْفِ Sir, how? قَالَ He said, he does or commits a sin, and that sin stays in front of his eyes. He's always thinking about it, always reflecting upon it. Khaifan fearing Allah, mushfiqan, and having regret and feeling bad about it, always crying about it, always sad about it, always modest regarding his Lord because of the sin. Always with his head down in front of his Lord. Always with his heart broken in front of his Lord. So that sin becomes a means for him to achieve success in this life and thereafter. To such a degree that that sin becomes more beneficial for him than all the obediences or a great amount of obediences he could have done. Because of what came from that sin of his regret, his not promising never to commit the sin again, his constantly reflecting upon the sin, his humility before Allah Taala. These are all matters that bring about the sa'ada, the happiness of a servant, and his success. And to that sin becomes the means of that servant entering the jannah. Wa al hasana. He could do a good deed. And through that good deed, into the hellfire. How? Yaf al Hasana does a good deed, and he keep acting as if he's done a favor for his Lord. Keep mentioning as if he has done some uh, uh, something that is praiseworthy for his Lord, and he develops a pride and an arrogance, and he sees himself at a level he should never see himself. 
And he becomes astonished with himself. And he feeds up for this. Saying, for out I did this. Well, for out to I did this. And this enters into his heart that which is called urjub, being astonished with oneself. Well, kibber, pride. Well, fakhr, boasting. And believing oneself better than others. All of those matters will be a reason for his destruction. Now, the way that Nukayim is saying this is really beautiful. I read it years ago, and it's probably more beautiful than. Look, listen to what he calls this type of person. Allah Taala, if Allah wants, be had a miskin. Allah wants for this that he's sick, <laughs> poor, and he horrible servant. Khairan, good. Ibtilahu, he'll test him with a matter that will break him down and lower his neck and make him be little, think little of himself. And he make himself look little at within himself. He will no longer look as if he's all of this. This is what Allah wants good for servant. But if Allah wants other than that, he'll leave him to what he's doing. And he'll let him be astonished with himself. And he'll let him be prideful. And this is where Allah is forsaking that servant. الموجب لحلاكة which mustn't necessarily bring about that service destruction. فَإِنَّ الْآرِثِينَ because those who know كُلَّهُمْ مُجْمِعُونَ all of them are from consensus that the tawfiq, the grace of Allah is that Allah don't lead you to yourself. That Allah doesn't lead you to yourself. Well, khutlan, Allah forsaking a servant, is that Allah has left that servant to himself. Go ahead. For man arad Allah, he who Allah ta'ala wants for him good. Fatadahu bab al kisab. He'll open for him the door of humility and breaking himself down. What the wam al in Allah and constantly returning to Allah. What is the kari lay? Feeling impoverished and poor and nothing before Allah. While you ru'ya to ayyub nafsah, seeing his own faults. Well, jahliha and the ignorance of his own self. Well, the miha and the justice of his own self. Well, utwaniha and the enmity of his own self. And he began to witness the bounties of his Lord upon him. And the goodness of his Lord to him. And the mercy of his Lord upon him. And the generosity of his Lord with him. And the goodness and his help and so on and so forth. So he will praise Allah. Fal-Araf. The one who knows Allah. Sa'ira ila Allah ta'ala. Bain hadayn janahayn. He's traveling to Allah Ta'ala between these two wings. Like a bird with two wings. He is not able to approach Allah Ta'ala. And his journey would not be correct. And he would not reach his destination unless he is between these two wings. When he misses one of them, He's like a bird that has lost one of its wings. Qala Shaykh al-Islam. And when Ibn Qayyim says Shaykh al-Islam, you know he, in this respect, he's usually referring to one or the other, but usually he's referring to Abu Ismail al-Harawi. Al-Av Yasir al-Allah. The servant is traveling to Allah. Between witnessing Allah's blessing upon him, and at the same time seeing his faults in his self and in his actions. 
And this is the meaning of the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the authentic hadith. The hadith saying, Sayyid al-Istikfar is called the best form of seeking forgiveness. The absolute best form of seeking forgiveness. The servant says in it what? Alwan ta Rabbi. Allah you are my Lord. La ilaha illa ant. None has the right to be worshipped except you. Khalaqtani, you created me. وَأَنَا abduk and I am your servant. وَأَنَا عَلَىٰهْدِكَ وَأَعْدِكَ مَا اسْتَتَعْتُ And I am keeping to my promise and to your covenant and to that which you have ordered as much as I'm able. أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا سَنَعْتُ I seek refuge in you, Allah, from the evil I have committed. أَبُعُوا لَكَ بِنِعْمَتِكَ عَلَيَّ And I am aware of your blessings upon me. And I'm aware of my sins. You see, those two issues together. Fakfirli, forgive me. إِنَّهُ لَا يَكْفِرُ الظُّنُوبَ إِلَّا أَنْتِ Verily, no one forgives sins except you. فَجَمَعَ فِي قَوْلِهِ The Prophet ﷺ gathered in his statement, أَبُعُوا لَكَ بِنِعْمَتِكَ عَلَيَّ I am aware of your blessings upon me. وَأَبُعُوا بِذَنْبِ And I'm aware, or I admit, and I recognize my sins. Witnessing the blessing and witnessing the faults of oneself and one's action. When you witness the blessing, this brings about love of Allah and hemp, praise of Allah and shukr, gratefulness to Allah, the one who has blessed us and who has given us everything. And when you witness the faults of oneself and the faults of one's actions, this makes one humble. This breaks one down. This one makes one realize that one has no weight whatsoever. One is nothing. It makes one want to commit tawbah. Repentance fikulli waqt all time. And every time he looks at himself, he sees himself as the bankrupt. And this is the closest door that the servant can reach Allah with. The door of bankruptcy. فَلَا يَرَى لِنَفْسِي حَالًا Don't see yourself as having a status. وَلَا مَقَامًا or position. وَلَا سَبَبًا Some other reason يَتَعَلَّكْ بِي that you connected to. وَلَا وَسِلَةً مِنْهُ يُمُنُّ بِيهَا Or some means that you have to Allah that you're doing Him a favor. بَلْ يَدْخُلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى But when you enter upon Allah تَعَالَى Enter from the door of understanding that you are nothing and have nothing and that you are totally bankrupt. The one entering from a door as one who has been broken down by poorness, broken down by nothingness. Until this poorness has broken him down until it's entered into his heart. And poorness and humility has come to him at every angle. And he sees the necessity of his Lord Azza wa Jal. And he sees how poor he is and how impoverished he is. And everything about him is impoverished outwardly and inwardly. And his total dependence by necessity for his Lord Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And that if Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala was to stop being concerned with him for the blink of an eye he would be destroyed. And he will have a loss that, can, that is undescribable unless Allah Taala returns to him and his, and his mercy attaches his, uh, itself to him. There's no method that is closer than ubudiyya, servitude to Allah servitude to Allah and actually carrying it out and there's no veil or veil that is thicker than just making claims. Lastly he says, aslaha. And worship is based upon two principles. Hubba kamil, total complete love, wa tam, total and complete humility. And from these two matters come the two principles that we have mentioned earlier, 
witnessing the blessing of Allah, which brings about love, and witnessing the faults of ourselves, which brings about complete humility. And if a servant is upon this and places his traveling to Allah upon these two principles, his enemy will not be able to do anything with him except in those various moments of neglect. Uh, but soon as his enemy wounds him, how soon is Allah Taala? How quickly Allah Taala comes to his aid and takes care of him and wraps him in his mercy. This is uh, what I wanted to mention in this brief nasiha. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Can I ask a quick question? Regarding the matter of how you distinguish between what is mentioned in ayah with the blessings of your Lord regarding the blessings of your Lord and discuss it and bragging and he, is that you're mentioning haqqa'iq you're mentioning that which is reality and that you're connecting it to the ni'mah of your Lord the blessing of your Lord you're not saying you're independent of it and that's generally what bra braggers do from the fact that you're mentioning a haqiqa is what the Prophet ﷺ indicated I am the Sayyid of Walid Adam, I am the best of the Walid Adam, I am not boasting. So it's a reality, it's something real that you're talking about. And secondly, it says, regarding the blessing of your Lord. So you will be mentioning the manner in which you're praising Allah. You know, Alhamdulillah, you know, Allah has blessed me to do kadha wa kadha. And boasting usually doesn't have that. Mm hmm. It was mentioned in the khutbah. Yeah, I, I think I missed it somehow. You say I've done this and this and this to yourself, and you give yourself the glad tidings that Allah will accept it. Because Allah will accept from those who have taqwa. No. Bismillah, So a uh, question. Uh, help give advice. How do we rebuild our community? For we have separated in groups. Inshallah ta'ala, that's what this conference is for. Um, which we discuss the issue of unity. Um, but I would be interested in having a more detailed question. Because this is very general. When you say we have separated into groups, what do you mean by that? Are they all Salafis or non-Salafis? Uh, some who have went to Bidah innovation, and this, this or that, what other? More detail would be required, but the general premise and theme of the conference is dealing with unity for this great, for this very fact. Not from the standpoint that it's just something happening here in this area, but throughout the Muslim world, there's a need to go back to that which we have been ordered uh, of unity. Of course, based upon the haq. Of course, based upon the truth. So that will be dealt with tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, with some detail. I hope Allah ta'ala grants you tawfiq to be able to attend. And if not, to, to uh, get the CDs or get the cassette recordings. This is a piece of paper that inform me, informs me that the questions are still coming. A similar question was answered before this question was sent up. In regards to acknowledging Allah's blessings with the tongue, what is the best means or how does one avoid getting into the bragging or showing off? As I answered before, it is a matter of connecting it to the, the net of the netma of your Lord. 
For instance, you say I was able to make Hajj by the grace of Allah Taala. Allah blessed me and I made Hajj. And, and, I, and I praise Allah Taala upon the fact that I was able to make Hajj. There's a world of difference between that and saying, "Yeah, man, I, you know, I Hajj. I try to go every year. You know, Hajj is my thing. I, you know, I, I just do. I got to do a Hajj. You know, there's a difference. That's clear there. And so connecting in the Na'mah to your Lord makes the distinction. And another issue is this matter of bragging has to be looked into. As all bragging, in fact, uh, that which is necessarily forbidden or does, it, or does it have conditions and circumstances wherein certain types of things are allowed. That can be looked into later. Like the Sahabi who had a certain walk that was just a, a, a sort of manly type warrior type don't mess with me type walk and an arrogant type walk and the Prophet ﷺ said Allah hates this walk except in jihad and they were in a situation of jihad at that time so for every place in time there's a situation and a statement so it has to be looked into in a general sense and you know because sometimes we use these English terms for things Boasting, bragging, and you know, we have to really know what uh, does that mean. I mean, does it mean the man is missing himself so that so that he looks like he's shining? Then this is one thing. But if a, if a person is mentioning a particular thing that happened and that actually occurred and that is, that is reality, he's not making it up, and he's praising Allah to Barakah upon that, uh, there's no bragging in that, inshallah. Yani, what to do regarding waswasa? Yani, uh, the whispering of shaitan. Shaitan, inshallah, it is from him and not myself. Makes me think evil things. I seek refuge from uh, from him. Yeah, right? I seek refuge in Allah from him. But it comes back and gets worse and worse. Well, you continue. You should continue to seek refuge in Allah. Ta'ala. I mean, if anyone is going to get tired and worn out and fatigued during... The, in this battle, then let it be shaitan, not yourself. The tongue is, is, a, uh, is a very light uh, piece of equipment. A lot of it makes it very easy for one to uh, say all types of forms of remembrances upon one's tongue. So be con consistent in that. And also that it's a sign of iman. Some of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ came to him and said, Oh, Ya Rasulullah, sometimes we think thoughts that we would rather be cut or thrown from a mountain than anybody know. Prophet Muhammad said, "How the Sariyah Iman? This is clear, certain Iman. So if you're in a struggle like that, then keep on uh, seeking refuge with the best one that you can seek refuge with, and that is Allah Taala. And to uh, He's worn out, not that you're worn out. And to Shaitan is worn out, not that you are worn out. Whether it be wealth or misfortune, should it be considered a test, punishment, or reward? Depends." Things are judged by uh, the, the, the realities and the results of such. We said that the one who takes that, whatever it is, of wealth or whatever or benefit, and praises Allah Taala, and inwardly recognizes the blessing of Allah, and then expresses that on the tongue, and he expresses it on the tongue, and then spends that blessing. In the way of Allah, then that's the one who's grateful. But the fact that wealth can be a misfortune for some, and be a test for some, punishment for some, and a reward for some, there's no doubt about that. It depends on the circumstance. Prophet said regarding wealth, mal and salih, li rajm salih. And he would have blessed righteous wealth for a righteous man. And Allah, but Allah speaks about the family and the children being a fitna. So it can be all of that. It can be a punishment or it can be a reward. Depending on how uh, a person is dealing with it and what they are doing with it and the like. Bus. إن شاء الله في هذا القدر كفاية سنفي إن شاء الله تعالى 
hopefully to hold us for a while. Uh, may Allah Taala bless the sisters who had the, the time and the interest and the focus to listen, and may He uh, grant them the ability and, and implement that which was beneficial in this uh, lecture and inculcated in their lives. May Allah Taala is able to do all that. This has been an Insight audio recording. All rights to this recording are reserved by Insight Audio. Insight Audio has now moved this audio to the Creative Commons license. Please download this audio, make copies.